The ocean is really, really important because if you think about the oxygen just to what we need to breathe, 70% of all your lifespan oxygen comes from the ocean. We're in the, in the middle of the fire and 2019 for sure will be the hottest year until 2020. So the ocean heat content has increased dramatically. It would have happened naturally, but over a much longer time period. Everyone's now focusing on plastic and forgetting about bigger issues like climate change and human population growth and overfishing. If we can stabilise, that would be a great start, but uh, we're not there just yet. We are approaching the end of the age of people on this planet and living as we know it within our lifetime. Humans survived the ice ages and they will probably will survive uh, for many thousands of years more. It's humbling, it's really good to know, there's so many things we can still discover. The days of Darwin and those, they're here again and we're on the ship mm. trying to discover new things. I don't know, I think it's, it's fascinating. This is incredible. <laughs> this was a dream come true. So the core goal of Seamaster is to provide opportunities for students. So we have the Seamaster, which is the education program, and we've got ASCA, which is the science. And we have scientists that are super e eager to teach. The students are going to class and they're learning about all these different subjects and they go into the lab and they see that hands-on, the application of that. Not all of them are from marine backgrounds, um, so it also gives them an exposure to what marine science is like, the oceanography side of things. To be in the ship, it's a privilege. There's something, there's that feeling you cannot ever describe it to anybody. That's like, I mean, I'm, I'm in her, I'm touching her, she's, she's so powerful. You look at her everywhere, you're like, I'm in this vessel. She's the flagship of South Africa. PT, she was not built in South Africa, she was built in Finland. 140 million euros were spent on this vessel. For a while, she was the first of her kind in the world. privileged to be owning this vessel as a Department of Environmental Affairs. This is a, an Antarctic vessel. So to be on board, you have to be attached to an Antarctic program. And you know, at the most, there are 22 programs within South Africa, across all the universities. But some universities may have five of these programs within their fold. And yet there are other universities that are not attached to any Antarctic program at all. The CMESA is about breaking that barrier and allowing every university to be part of what is a national facility. At the moment, I'm a honorary uh, research associate at UKZN in Durban. My work is fundamentally looking at the impacts of big storms on the coast and the impacts of sea level rise on the coast. How is the coast going to change with changing storms and changing sea levels? I have been asked to conduct uh, lectures for the students on weather observations and I've included a little bit about our forecasting process. We also conduct some deck work where we take the students around to do the visual observations. What we do is we try to check the distribution of different species alongside our oceans and also their abundance. So like uh, where are they distributed and how abundant are they in 
those certain areas that were distributed. So um, on the ship to lecture students on the topic of marine plastic pollution and how to sample plastic pollution at sea. I'm also part of the science team where we specifically focus on a transect across, running across the Agalis current. So I'll be sampling for plastics at each station. Uh, I came to lecture about uh, acoustics. I study sounds and see how we can use study sound to study animals or uh, look at animals underwater and also listen to their way they talk to each other. There is a big global importance of the Agalis, and which is one of the reasons why we really want to keep monitoring it to see what is doing, how much water every year is going into the Atlantic, how much water stays in the Indian Ocean. We're measuring the power, the strength, the temperature, the salinity, and all the different biogeochemical properties of the Agalis current. As long as South Africa sees the importance of it and continues this sort of monitoring, I think we can at least then get a baseline study of what's happening to the, uh, in a current that basically only borders us and that has global importance. Yeah, I think what is as critical here is, is, is just to have interest and know the history. Uh, South Africa has been involved. I mean, they're the first 11 signatories in the Antarctic Treaty, and not many people are aware of that. Not many people are aware that this vessel is a third generation vessel in polar research. The first one was the RSA, and then it was the SA Galas, now it's SA too. I remember this one voyage where only when the American president mentioned and wished the Antarctic expedition teams you know, a Happy New Year or Merry Christmas and then mentioned South Africa. That's when I believe some of the ministers actually started realizing what does it mean. In the past, majority of funding and research but being done here was mainly by the American scientists or by Dutch scientists. And I think South Africa we can give so much to the world. Just understanding the physical, not geographical data of this and interactions and then get to the biological things, we can really revolutionize what's happening in the rest of the world by understanding what's going on here. It's going to take a while.